get started. Um, I just wanted to introduce everybody. So Lindsay Ferry is here today. I don't know if everybody's gotten a chance to meet Lindsay yet. Um, she is our new human resources and payroll coordinator and our parks coordinator. Um, and it's been a while since we've had a good thorough parks update at CIC. So I invited her to come and kind of fill us all in on everything parks. Um, and Karen, you know, you're here, and you're also wearing the hat for the parks committee sometimes, so you can sometimes feel like wearing that hat and fill us in on what the parks committee's been up to. Um, but Lindsay's also been attending these meetings too. So um, that is our um, main topic for today. That will not be joining us today. Um, and also, we can spend a minute you know, kind of updating on just other happenings. But um, since we got started a little late and we do have a hard stop at 10, um, I'm gonna let you kind of cover it. And then, um, it, um, yeah, could we, I don't know if you guys have questions about anything else park related, um, we can get to that too. Yeah, thank you for that. being here, Lindsay. Of course, I'm so excited to start uh, meeting everybody and really talking about parks now that I got my feet pretty wet in the past few months. Mm -hmm. um, my main focus, is just building the right team right now. So I have about three new employees um, that are doing fantastic. They're a great addition um, to the parks team. But I'm really big on first impressions with our parks. So I've done a thorough assessment of eight of our parks, um, soon to be nine, once that inclusive playground is up and going. Um, so we've been focusing on updating the pavilions, um, getting some fresh coats of paint on those picnic tables, making sure that the picnic tables that we do have are usable, they're nice. So in some of our parks, you might see some that are in the process of getting replaced. Um, because when, I, when our, our guests come and use those things, I want to make sure that they're great. Are the ones at McJanet Park? Yep, those the, got updated, painted. Oh, those were awful. Yes. <laughs> off. They were dangerous, actually. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. we fixed. Um, we actually fixed two. Um, the third one was fine, and we put fresh coats of paint there. Good. We made sure to take down those obnoxious signs. We had so many signs around there, so now we have this one nice McDaniel sign. So it's welcoming, really nice. We also fixed the um, the railing as well. We took down some dead trees. Good. So um, when we talk about first impression, those are a lot of the things that I'm focusing on. Mm -hmm. um, and we are this week starting one of our bigger projects at Blue Heron Park. So we're doing updated trail maintenance. Um, we're, we're essentially redoing the trails. I don't know if anyone has walked there recently, but they're pretty overgrown, um, but we wanna make them usable. We're also focusing on the geese issue oh, that we yeah. have there. Yeah. Um, that is a great con for geese, but it's not great for the people who wanna utilize that park. So we are in the process of finding a very environmentally friendly way to deter the geese from using that body of water. Um, so I'm in the process actually of finding a solution for that, um, more to come. Sure. And that might help with our Onanda geese issue as well. Hmm. Uh, I know we've gotten a lot of feedback on that and um, I'm really listening to what the guests are saying that visit our parks. Um, in addition to our Blue Mare project, which will take about a month, um, we are going to be repaving and having that parking lot be a little bit bigger, so there's parking on both sides. We're also going to be putting in an ADA-friendly walkway from the parking lot to the pavilion to get to the pathways, because right now there is nothing that is um, ADA-friendly and accessibility from the parking lot, so that was really important to us. And then what you'll see in fall, for Outhouse Park, we are adding another pirate ship playground. Wow. In nice. addition, one, so kids nice. can battle on the pirate ships just to create a little bit of extra fun. <laughs> um, but we also did that because we actually needed about six to 12 feet more of mulch to be in compliance for our spring set. So instead of that area being dead space, we chose to add that addition to the park. So we will be doing that in fall. Um, who's I going to leave behind? So, like parallel to the pirate ship? Yes. Okay. Okay. The yep. swings. Okay. Yeah. Right over there. Um, trying to think. Another addition that I know over winter was a really big deal was our old Nature Nuts building at Onanda Park. We turned into a game room. So that way there could be fun for all ages. We have two pool tables, we have a ping pong table, air hockey for adults, 
air hockey for kids, <laughs> and then a little toddler section with a with two train tables, a reading section. Um, and I will tell you the feedback we've gotten on that room has been like amazing. Um, I've seen so many people using it. They like that space because if, if they're renting out cabins or they went down there and all of a sudden it starts raining, they have mm -hmm. a space that they can still continue to enjoy. Yeah. Um, nice. You know, build those friendships and um, just continue to have fun as a family. But then also just to get out of the sun too is kind of nice for little kids. Mm -hmm. um, so we, we've, we've received a lot of positive feedback on that. So definitely, definitely worth what we did. So those are a couple of things that we're working on. Very big things. That's um, a lot. It's, it's a, a lot. lot. Of yeah, yeah. That sounds yeah. awesome. Yeah. Yeah. I'm very excited for um, just the future of parks and the direction we're heading into. I do know that we are holding a music in the park event on July 20th at Outhouse Park. I know it's something that has been talked about a lot with us wanting to do it. I know Karen doesn't. Well, it's been, it was request, heavily requested <laughs> when we updated the parks master plan. Wow. So um, I'm so excited yeah. to see how that goes. I know we have food trucks coming. Yeah. Uh, we have a band, so it, it's fun for everybody. It's open, obviously, to the community. Um, and so you thank you to the Parks Committee for putting that together. And um, it, I, I think it's gonna be amazing. Yeah, I do too. Is there another movie night you just saw? So there's, uh, the, the city is doing um, two movie nights and then we have um, Kids Town is actually holding their own community movie night at Out House in August. Um, we're just allowing them to go to park and then they're actually putting it all together, but it's free to the public to attend if they would like to. Yes. Last year we did a movie night, but uh, mm -hmm. it, it was uh, it was a difficult project. Yeah, and I think next year we're gonna um, just in our budget talk about that a little bit more for future movie nights because I know we like to do things big and exciting. So we'll have that planned out for next year. Do you guys have any questions with anything or any topics that you guys wanted to discuss? Well, I, yeah. listening to all this, yeah. it's, it's, it's like, all, holy cow. That's all happy news. <laughs> all yeah. happy news. Yeah. All happy news. Very nice. Well, there are a couple of other things. So um, one thing, in addition, next year, and this will have to be addressed in the budget, we've talked about doing a winter festival at Onanda. Mm -hmm. Right. And um, yeah, I, I went down there this winter and I talked to people, you know, people weren't working. So they had their kids out there sledding. And so I, I asked them at what they thought about having, well, I asked them if they, they would like something like a hot chocolate uh, truck or station or something there. And so this one man, he said, why don't you just get some food trucks? And I'm thinking, why not? Why yeah, not? And then use the lower level for, for something else. Mm -hmm. So th that uh, I, I think, I hope it works out. I mean, because we don't celebrate winter in this town for some reason. Mm -hmm. And we should, because mm -hmm. guess what? It's hotter than hell out there now. I'd much <laughs> rather put a coat. <laughs> <laughs> I that talking about yeah. I mean, you know, like mm -hmm. Demos. Yeah, you know, they they can have a sled dog awesome demo, idea. a snowshoe demo. The sled dog demo, they need a lot of snow. <laughs> 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 but, um, yeah, I mean, they, there's a lot of, I mean, oh, didn't we also talk about like having the snowman building? Yes, 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 and, yes. And all kinds of stuff. <laughs> I mean, like, yeah. So, you know, a day really, really good. And uh, I think so too. I, I thought so. And I don't believe, are we having the Halloween celebration this year? As far as I know, yes. Yes. Anna, you heard that? Yes, we are. Okay, good. Yeah, okay. And the, then there's one other thing about uh, parks, the senior program. Lindsay and I met with Quail Summit last week and we're meeting with them again next week. And um, they would like to take over our senior program in conjunction with the city and the town. And uh, they've offered the use of their facility. I have all, I have their activity calendar and uh, we're gonna try to choose a couple of activities, not everything because people that live there pay a lot of money for their recreation. Mm -hmm. um, and we feel like we're kind of horning in. So we're looking at now once every other week. And um, I haven't heard back from my group yet about uh, what they think of it. Although I had initially told them they thought it would be a good idea to do something like that. So our initial thing is going to be a, a picnic 
and we will do it. I don't know if you remember when we first did this, we had a picnic here and we had, or no, we had an outhouse, out, out. We had like 25, 30 people there, yeah. And so we're hoping that we can get a turnout again and get some more ideas. And uh, um, because I have ideas, but that doesn't mean everybody has the same ideas. <laughs> so we, I, be I thought so too. Um, <laughs> And and you did an ad for the next newsletter to, uh, to, to announce it. Yeah. Right. Yep. Yep. Right. So. And then we, we should have a, a date after our meeting on the twelfth. Yes. Yes. Um, so more information to come on that. But right. as soon as we know, we'll advertise that so that way um, our community members are aware and we can get that attendance. That's right. That. That's right. Yes. So. Yeah. Good things happening. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. great. Um, and then there's the inclusive playground. I know everybody knows about that mm -hmm. being built across from Outhouse Park, but I don't know if everybody knows the the when they construct the playground, <clears throat> they're going to do it in August, and it's going to be a community build. Mm -hmm. So you can actually go to the Inclusion in Motion website and sign up to participate in the actual construction of the playground. Um, so. They're going to have, it's kind of, uh, to me, it kind of sounds like Habitat for Humanity stuff. They're going to have jobs for kids. They're going to have jobs, you know, for adults and everybody in between. Um, and I was there when they first presented the idea a couple of years ago here. And it sounds like really, it really is absolutely anybody can help. They Do you have a date on that? Um, it's on their website, but I think it's the week of August 23rd. 23rd. Yeah. Whatever yeah. That, yeah, whatever that week is It's the August. whole week. So they've got um, available times for people to come and volunteer throughout the week. I mean, when you talk about like just wanting community involvement, this would be a great project for anybody, um, whether it's for your business or, you know, your family wants to be involved in the community and something big like this mm -hmm. this is a great opportunity to do that mm -hmm. i know they plan on doing um you know a celebration as well that week mm -hmm. and they are actually planning their own movie night as well so because a lot of kids are involved with this project i'm not just adults so um, i mean they go big so <laughs> it's going to be an awesome um opportunity for people to and they've also involved. named the park Ocean junction no they the uh, they named it um after Mike's son. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. MJ. 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 Yeah. Junction okay. Is the name of yeah. the actual playground. The park is still going to be called Outhouse Park West. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Since it was still part of the Outhouse family land. But yeah. yeah that's kind of cool. Yeah. And, and all the money is there to do all this? I, mean, um, I think they're near their goal. I'm okay. not sure exactly how much money they've raised, and I don't know if they've made it all the way yet, but they still... They I didn't, didn't know active. that, because I, I have uh, information on another grant opportunity. Uh, really active I'll email Mike. Yeah. Getting funding for yeah. July 10th. Okay, so it's this weekend. Yeah. Oh, that is this weekend. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's Saturday. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, they're doing a golf draw. Well, oh, sorry. Oh, easy oh, for you to say. Drop. In, um, I'm not sure whether they're doing it on site or um, at the existing outhouse park somewhere, but I guess like people, it's kind of like those little rubber ducky fundraisers. Yeah, yeah. You get your name on a golf ball, they drop it, and whatever goes in the hole, there's going to be prizes. And hmm. everybody, you, if you sign up for it, you have to pay for, you know, like five golf balls per or something like that. But we had a flyer and order for it. So. Um, that's a cool idea. Yeah. Lots of fun stuff. Anyone else have any other questions or anything? What, what's the status of the town's acquisition of the RSM frontage yeah. and the uh, easement or right away up to the west? Is that know. happening or not happening? Or, Gary, you know, nothing's been discussed recently. Right. Nothing, nothing, no decisions. So your sense is it'll happen or not happen, or you just don't know? Not sure. Yeah, so I don't think that, I just don't well, think I, it, it caused there. such a fury a few yeah, months ago. Yeah. Um, totally different changing or a different spot. Miller Park, which I admittedly have not walked since last year, 
it disturbed me to see all these trees that were planted that the deer had managed to eat and mm. have that. they put screens around them or replanted? So the tree committee um, actually just did an assessment and my team is starting to work towards a resolve on all the things that they have pointed out in Miller Park and ways that we can improve that. So it, I right now that has not happened, but we are in the process of resolving those issues. And when we plant new trees on how to prevent those things from happening. Well, it's a Jim's crew ought to know that you cannot plant trees. <laughs> in the middle like of the field. <laughs> in the middle of the field, just slap lollipops for deer. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, yes. Okay. Yeah, that actually, can I give a little update on the tree stuff, which actually goes hand in hand with any parks update, especially now. Um, so, as most of you know, you know, when Jim Rose is an arborist, I think he's retired now, but has always been um, a big help to the town, especially with um, Onanda Park and Dennis, helping Dennis over the years with our trees. But officially, the town doesn't have any arborists or um, foresters on staff. So we've always relied on <clears throat> outside, you know, suggestions and help. Um, and so Part of the charge of the tree team was to kind of give us that help and they've been very willing um, and very eager Dennis is a part of that group since he retired he hopped back on that group to help um, and they've been going through every park and every cemetery and just identifying um, trees that need to be removed trees that need to be pruned trees that need help like at Miller Park um, they've made some suggestions for watering and using the gator bags the ones that zip up around the tree and fill once a week um, or mulching or pruning and stuff um, they've been really really helpful and we have um, three certified arborists in that group one comes regularly um, and is very willing to give advice and stuff so we I think our um, and, and Lindsay and I that's Dan Marion, right? Yeah. 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 About, his dad is my arborist. Yeah, uh, yeah they're friend. both arborists. His dad's a member, but he doesn't often come yeah. to the meetings. But he, well, he's he, old. Yeah. Like some of the rest of us. Experienced. Yeah, right. Yeah, seasoned. <laughs> We've even talked about you know, having potential trainings for some of our park staff to learn how to properly prune trees, because there's a wrong way to do it. Yeah. Um, and I think I think our parks trees in general will be a, will be a lot healthier in the coming years yes, as, as we you know get a handle on it. Mm -hmm. So I, that's really good. It, you know, we spend so much money on trees, as most of you know. We spent a lot of money on the trees at Miller Park, so we want to keep them. Well, they're really important. Yeah, and then also you know we have trees in the cemeteries that are ash. They're going to fall. And that that they're brings up headstones over. So we you know we're yeah, getting a hold on all this stuff. It's just basic maintenance that. But that brings up another subject because cemeteries fall under parks and recreation. Yes, and um, at the town last town board meeting, there was a presentation mm -hmm. about the status of our cemeteries. And it was a pretty deflating conversation. <laughs> there are many, many headstones that need um, mm -hmm. refurbishing, for mm -hmm. lack of a better word. Mm -hmm. And that can be very expensive. So. Do you have any update on, on yeah. what they're going to do with that? Yep, so um, we've kind of had many meetings. We've also been working with Kate, our finance clerk, mm -hmm. on um, and also Sarah for grants. Mm -hmm. So we are looking at yeah. how to, to fund, um, because like you said, it is very expensive, but it's also very important to have these headstones maintained and in good condition exactly. because that is history. Yes. Um, and some of those headstones date back hundreds and hundreds of years. Right. And just with the natural occurrences of nature, the snow, all that, they're starting to crumble. So we've identified headstones already that um, need to be replaced like ASAP. I know Leaf, our historian, has reached out to someone about um, he creates a cast Mm -hmm. to replace it so we are in the process of budgeting for next year um, so that way we can maintain our beautiful cemeteries that we do have um, and then what we can do right now and what we need to do right now before winter comes i think those are in the hunt cemetery mm -hmm. the, yeah yes. yeah pretty sad i, I have a thing for cemeteries <laughs> i'll nag about it because well, it's history. really I mean, important it's town's history and it right. goes back so far and you can't replace those things. So we need to take no, a very good time as we can. Absolutely. Yeah. Does anybody check the like wood lawn and places like that that uh, how 
and they contact their people. Yeah, Leaf, Leaf has been um, very great about contacting even Bloomfield, um, the city. So he's actually, he's in partnership with everybody because everyone has similar issues based on the year those headstones were made. Everyone's seeing those <coughs> issues occurring mm -hmm. just because of the nature of the materials that they used yeah. hundreds of years ago. South, uh, South Bristol just redid their cemeteries and uh, they redid some of the headstones. So you, you might want to contact Dan Marshall. Yeah. He, was, uh, he, he um, we've yeah. also been talking to him. I think that's where he got some of the ideas. For but him. I also suggested that they contact some places in New England because they too have that problem and they are very, very focused on cemeteries. Mm -hmm. So, um, I just have a feeling that they might also have some suggestions on how to deal with that. I don't know who to contact. But, <clears throat> Leaf will what, be able to research that. but it seems to me there has to be, a, particularly Maine, because uh, I've uh, toured a lot of cemeteries. <laughs> Speaking of historians, is Ray no longer interested in being on CIC? No, he is. He just can't always come. And he's been talking with Leaf about this stuff, okay. too. So he's yeah. still active. Okay, good. He's just not here as much, obviously, okay. since he's retired. But no, he still comes. He yeah, comes to the Ag Committee when he can. Okay. So. I hate to see these old guys fade away. I don't think he's going to be fading away anytime soon. He's still pretty active. He's still very involved. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I just know he can't always make it to these meetings. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, we've got I'm, about 15 minutes left, but um, does anyone have any questions or other comments? I don't have a question. I have a comment. I like what you said about treating people as guests. I've oh, never yeah. looked at it that way. <laughs> yeah. You know, yes. they're coming to you. Yeah. If they come into our parks, they are guests of our parks. Right. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. You know, in the beginning, I started That's like, cool. well, our residents are coming. But honestly, we have. So this is such a diverse community and so many people from all over come here, whether it's vacation or they're passing mm -hmm. through, mm -hmm. that they truly are guests in our town, yeah. in our parks. Mm -hmm. um, and that also stems from my retail background. Um, just everyone who came into our building was a guest mm -hmm. and we should treat them as such. So that's kind of where my mentality is um, with running parks is that's they are guests. Great. And I want to have a great first impression because I want them to come back mm -hmm. and use our parks. You're in the hospitality business. Yes. Yeah. That's true. <laughs> yeah. That's true. Right. Yeah, when I did down to that was my approach was all hospitality. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Sure. Well, especially with Onanda, um, we're actually seeing a lot more rentals or cabins this year. Um, for example, this week the whole entire park is rented out, which makes sense. It's fourth of July week. Mm -hmm. Um so that's very exciting. So I know we have future plans. I know it's been talked about before. Um, you know, with, I have to have a meeting with MRB. That's next on my list to go over some of our bigger plans for the uplands. Um, and also like the trails up there, I know have been a topic of conversation. So we're gonna, I'm gonna partner with MRB. We're gonna get our site plans going um, so that way we can identify our trail markers, maybe move some of our trails a little bit. But as of right now, my team for this year Remarked all the trails with very large identifiable nice. markers Good. going up and down um, because I know that was a lot of feedback that we've heard. <clears throat> so we are doing a lot um, and I feel very invested in this. So I'm very excited just to continue progressing mm -hmm. with everything that's going on. How, how successful was the spring and up, upland? Oh, for the spring? You said that. Yeah. Sarah, you, you're very sure. excited about it. So, so I was just it. there on Friday. Um, we went. It was yesterday for the holiday. My husband and I went for a walk in the uplands after we dropped our kids off because summer camp was actually open yesterday. Um, and <clears throat> comparing it to last year, it, it is it is a lot better. I'd say a lot better. Um, and actually comparing like Winanda with my house right now. Um, when we were up there, what I could say is that I don't really see any what I like to say naked trees. You know, when the some I mean the caterpillars will strip a tree completely mm -hmm. yeah. bare of leaves, mm -hmm. and we definitely had that last summer at Onanda. Um, I couldn't find any that were mm -hmm. completely stripped. Was there still caterpillar activity? A little. There was mm -hmm. some. Yeah, you can't get rid of all of them, but I mean it's a very 
um, obvious difference. What I found interesting was we only had the uplands sprayed, not lakeside, but the spraying from the uplands, I feel had an impact on lakeside because probably. down there, there's the trees are still full. They probably drifted a little bit. I, I was very skeptical, but I was amazed. We're, we live a little bit south and had probably a couple hundred acres sprayed and they're gone. I mean, and, and we had turds falling everywhere <laughs> last year. And I found one tree that it actually was more in the middle of a field that must not have gotten sprayed and you could see the difference. Yeah, there's definitely a difference. Uh, yeah, just looking at other properties and then I wasn't here last year really noticed that difference. That's why Sarah, um, yeah, it, it was great that you visited and really were able to bad. notice that difference. Um, it, was, it was horrible almost everywhere last year too though. And so yeah, this year, it, in, now I can't speak for everybody, but like at my house, it's definitely not as bad this year, but we did spend hours scraping. So I, I don't know that. And then we also did the, the banding around the trees, mm -hmm. some of the bigger, older trees. Um, but, so I can't say that it wasn't as bad everywhere, but I had heard somebody, I think up on Goth Road, who had their property sprayed, and they said it didn't work as well as they had hoped. Like there was still mm -hmm. quite a bit of foliation. So I'm grateful that it seems like it worked really well for us, Sotonanda, and for you, but it sounds like it wasn't a Well, you, you don't know because I no. just read over the weekend there's some kind of a virus that yes. also... So we saw some mm -hmm. of the signs of that at our yeah. house. It's more than that. Dan Marion, he did spray my trees. Yeah. Um, but he explained to me that uh, gypsy moth goes in a, a three-year cycle. The first year, there's damage. The second year, there's lots of damage. And the third year, there's a receding amount of damage. Yeah. We're in the third year. And yeah, la and so it makes sense because yeah. last year was really bad. Yeah. But um, I have virtually no, I mean, and there were caterpillar sacks all over the oak tree. Uh, but, um, and, and I heard them for a while, and I don't hear well, right? I heard them for a while, but then they started just falling. Yeah, creepy. So, um, yeah, that's, I mean, that's the thing, too, right? So I was talking with Dan Marion. Not you're talking to the young one yeah, yeah. a lot about this this spring yeah. i mean i emailed him all the time um and i told him i'm sorry maybe i should hire you for all this advice <laughs> but we would talk about it at the tree meetings too and it it was a choice you know do you spray or do you not yes, spray? Right. he did not and i think it was fine but it's not the same level of devastation either across the area so right people were exactly a, a yeah. much higher level than and other people yeah. and uh, what i also noticed about the cycle is not everybody's in the same year like, yes yeah i spoke to a woman who has a property um somewhere near onanda and she said that we were talking a lot last year she said they were in their second year last year whereas i feel like a lot of us were probably in the maybe even the first year you know so i mean it's kind of moves around. And then this year, I hear more chatter about it in farther western parts of the state where they weren't experiencing mm -hmm. it all last year. So it's interesting how it moves. Like Honeyway didn't have much activity last year. Our house is, is kind of in between um, San Diego and Honeyway, We're right in Bristol. So we would drive from our house down into Honeyway and there's nothing. I know. No, I know. no damage. Not, yeah. No one had any caterpillars. Yeah. This year, they have happened. caterpillars. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I saw that. Yeah. So it's it's really interesting how it moves. Yeah. I'm glad when it's over, but it'll come back eventually. <laughs> Nature. <laughs> so right. cyclical. Invasive species. But it's certainly not as bad as it was whenever it was 10 years ago, where oh. you, could, you could look and see a whole hillside yeah. wiped out. Yes. Yeah, so I drive, um, obviously, I drive down to 64 and then back up the hill, uh, on, you know, every day throughout the week and coming in the morning and then coming back compared to what it looked like last year it looked like fall last year when it was the really leaves bad. dropping now yeah. it's patchy i don't know if it's because of the spraying in certain areas versus yeah. not because those planes were busy in bristol um or if it's just that it's not bad or both but it's patchy there's some definite brown spots that are just completely foliated but there was a lot of area that stayed green too well let's hope really long answer to your <laughs> well, it's just 
who knows, you know. So yeah, I, we I, think I, it worked at a I will, will say, and uh, Joyce, you listening? Yes. <laughs> they have, our family's got three meadows. It's usually alive with monarchs and there are no monarchs mm -hmm. this year. I mm -hmm. don't know whether it's because of the spring, but mm -hmm. we've got lots of milkweed, but no monarchs. And mm -hmm. go up there, there'd be monarchs all over the place. So that may be the fallout. Yeah, that spray doesn't distinguish. I, I don't know. Any caterpillar would have been killed by it. But. Well, except they sprayed before the monarchs would have ordinarily come. The timing know. would work. Yeah. yeah. The monarchs lay eggs a couple times a summer, right? Yeah, they're, the they're generations, yeah. yeah. And they it usually coincides with when the milkweed has popped up through the field grass. <laughs> discriminating on or they went to Florida instead. I don't know. <laughs> That's what I mean, discriminating. <laughs> but I, I, I was disturbed to see no monarchs this year. See those little yellow butterflies, though. Lots Spotted of them. Tails? No, no, no. Oh, just the little, the little ca cabbage butterflies, I think they call them. See lots of those, but no monarchs. So nine parks we can increase. Yeah, 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 nine, nine parks. Yeah. And then this fall, um, the Finger Lakes Land Trust um, easement up on Jones Road should be open to the public. Oh, really? Fall, I think. We're still waiting to hear, but they're working on parking lots, bay parking lots, and stuff like that. Hmm. Not a town park, but you know we did it in partnership with them, so it's still. Does the town put in the parking lot, or do they put it in? They um they own some of the land and some of its easements. We don't own any of it, but we contributed money, obviously. So, mm -hmm. um, but that'll just be trans and. Like there's already trails there yeah, yeah. so that's yeah. what they said yeah. they didn't have to do a lot of trail creation just trail maintenance mm -hmm. and then putting in a place for parking and stuff like that but um, so while not a town park definitely another opportunity i can't wait for that one yeah well, i walked probably 10 years ago when we first started and, and what's the guy's name that retired from community college that lives up adjacent to it. He had mowed a bunch of trails. So what's the name of the guy? He lives virtually next door. Marty Dodge. There you go. Yeah. Oh, Marty, yeah. Marty Dodge had trails all through there. I, did, I knew Marty. I, I used to go on uh, bear hunts with them. I got to tag him. <laughs> that was cool. Yes. That was cool. I don't know if I have any questions about parks. I just picture Karen on a safari. <laughs> Not anymore. This kind of ruins everything. But honestly, there there's nothing like being able to hold the head of a bear in your lap. That's uh, <laughs> an amazing experience. DC showed up this winter with a GPS and said, um, can we have permission to go look for a bear behind your house? <laughs> And he showed me the little, there was a bear with a video video tracker, collar yeah, yeah, um, yeah. somewhere near our house and they found her and they, obviously all of that's private property and they needed to find her. And so they just went knocking on doors till they found her. Yeah. She ended up not being behind our house. It, it was off by probably a few hundred yards, but she was just over the <clears> door. <throat> and this was one that had a tracker also, but she also had three cubs. You could hear them on the tree back when, when we wow. caught her. It was really interesting, man. Yeah, last year, a bear came through my backyard. And one of the feeders that I have, I have up in a tree. So I have a photograph of the bear standing straight up, trying to get at this feeder. Wow. It was huge. Then the next morning, get up, go out the front door. 
I see bear marks by my, by my front door, uh, that far away from my doorbell. That I wouldn't like. <laughs> the doorbell. Yeah, it's crazy. I wouldn't like that. No. Wow. Amazing. Yeah. Sarah, can you hear me? Yes. Yep. Um, I just wanted to mention that we will be having another event sometime this summer, um, and that is the rededication of the lakefront parcel at Onanda. Um, but Doug told me that uh, Cuomo wants to attend, so it's going to be um depending on his schedule when we have this this summer what this summer yeah so that's because we finally got possession of it right onanda yeah. Or no, not Oksana. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta change your name, Oksana. <laughs> it's too much like Onanda. Has that officially actually happened if I lay or not? Not quite. No, it's closer. Uh, it is. <laughs> Is there a potential that they won't do that? Because no. well, we pass the legislature, yeah. Signed yeah. everything, but it's not, like, or I don't know if they've signed everything, but it was, I, last week I heard it wasn't quite finished. For whatever reason, no. I don't What's there to finish? I don't know. Oh, don't you hate government? <laughs> um, I don't have anything else. But um, thank you, Lindsay, for coming. Yeah, it's great. It was great to meet you all. It's always busy at our parks. It seems like it just gets busier, but we're all the right reasons. Yeah, just, yeah. Can't wait for some of our winter events that we'll be having. Yeah, yeah. yeah. that sounds awesome, too. I like, I like the parks better in the wintertime. There's not, nobody there. <laughs> one, one thing, I, I don't know if I copied you in, but I made a suggestion about it. It occurred to me that people like me and and with other handicaps, more serious handicaps, have no access to swimming in the town of Canandaigua. They have very little access in the city of Canandaigua. So the only access is uh, the, the beach on the east side of the lake. So I suggested to Mark and Doug, I, I know I included him in there, that we look at getting a mat for um, Onanda, uh, you know what I mean? Uh, the, yeah, because it's relatively inexpensive. They have them in some oceanfront parks and I've seen them at Rehoboth Beach in Delaware and um, the beach on Assateague Island, I believe it was a couple of years ago. And they're, they're really quite amazing and, and sturdy enough for someone with a cane to have access to the water, whether they go swimming or not, you know, they can wade in the water or whatever. But uh, I suggested that because uh, I think we need to, I think we need to cover that area. So. Uh, really quick, I know we're almost out of time, but I forgot to mention also something that we've already done this year. Uh, we put in ADA friendly stuff at Butler Beach. So I don't know if anyone has mm -hmm. swam there before. Yep. The stairs were not super user friendly for anybody. Yep. Um, these stairs are a lot nicer. You mean coming down to the road? <laughs> Or going into the water, into the water. Yeah. but even like I can't do steps at all, and there are other people that can't do steps yeah. at all either. Yeah. Um, figuring out a solution for that as well. Yeah. yeah, so that that's a solution, a mat. Right. I like it. What, what, what's it called? It, I can't remember what exactly they call it, but what it is, it's like a pathway mat that you lay over the uh, sand or gravel, or and so it goes right down to the water. So it's an incline. Yeah, yeah. Just, just, just lay on top. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah, very similar. Yeah, very similar. And um, I was surprised how maneuverable it was because you know, you know, with a cane, you're always 
worried about tripping or catching it on something, but it was very, very maneuverable. And um, I suggested it to Doug. I don't know how much they cost, but they're certainly much less than some of the other solutions. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you guys. <laughs> um, so that's all I have. Um, I'll send out email about our next meeting and, um, you know, we'll have one soon come back at the end of the summer, maybe. Kind of with, you know, updates on how new projects are going or how we're using stuff like that. So, um, and I, I, I think it makes sense to share the trees update along with the parks. Yeah. yeah. So have more updates on that too. All right. Thanks everyone. Thank you, Thank Sarah. You. Thank you. Thanks. Well, have a good day. Thank you. Good day. Thank you.